Well, thanks for looking in again. Keith Ashplint in the workshop. So today, what we're going to do <coughs> is going to be looking at uh, a very much overlooked item. That is, where's the best position to uh, position a vice on the workbench? It may sound quite obvious, but there's different kinds of vices. For instance, there's this small one here. Now, I know it's not a proper engineering vice, but it does have a useful purpose. I bought this a few years ago and <clears throat> works on a suction basis with a suction pad there. And what I used it for was to um, hold small components in these nice soft jaws it's got there. And it came in handy for soldering sort of wires onto small motors and things. So it, it's much the more uh, versatile for that than the big workbench behind me. <coughs> the problem is with these, although they're quite cheap, you probably get one from uh, about £10, something like that, at a local supermarket. Uh, that's where I got this from. But over the last two or three years, um, it lost its suction. So it wouldn't adhere to any surface. And I even tried it on plate glass, and it lost its it's lost its resilience, and I think the the rubber mount there has sort of corroded, or eroded I should say. So, but nonetheless, it's still useful because it's it's, it's quite a, a substantial weight. You could mark, put it down, and uh, uh, still put something in there, and it will self support. So. Don't get one thinking you're going to hold it and uh, forever and a day and uh, with the suction facilities working. It works off this lever basis here, but because it just won't work. But it, it has it has got use. Anyway, <coughs> I want to go to another vice of more of an engineering um, vice, and uh, that's it. This is this one. I'll just adjust the camera. <coughs> So where to position, where, whoops, whoops, let me move this chair off the way. You know, those of you who have seen my videos before, you know, <laughs> everything is live. I don't edit the videos, so if it's a bit, not very really professional, it's because I'm not a professional photographer. However, um, uh, that's why you might see things. But if you think things go wrong here, uh, you'll see them. Because I publish the videos even though I don't edit them. Um, so we're going to look at this. Let's have a look at a bench first. That's a typical bench there. Let's have a see. See? Now, on this bench, let's say we're going to mount a vice. Let's have a look at this one. It's a record number three. I can tell you it's quite heavy. Um, quite a heavy vice. So where's the best position to put it? Now a lot of people made a mistake of putting the vice in the centre of the bench. Well, it's in that position there. But there's problems here. Let's have a look at one or two problems here. It's no use mounting it there because we've got a set of drawers here that will come out and bump into this lever here. So that's one reason why we don't put it there. And if there were no drawers there, it'd be okay. But <clears throat> the problem is if you let me get this right, yeah. If you um, Mount it there in that position. Yes, it works okay. Look, it goes round. But this, you need to make it as versatile as possible. So that is not the position. It's mounted too far to the back, and it wants to come more forward. So why is that? It, it works okay. Yeah, it works all right. But the problem is, if you want to put something bigger in bigger into it 
like this, like this piece of bra. Yeah, you can mount the bra that way horizontally. But what if you want to mount, mount it vertically, like that? The bench is in the way. So sometimes it's necessary to do that. So by moving moving it for moving it forward. So okay. To the position whereby you've got the the, the rear the jaw there, it will, you need to position it so it's just clearing the bench there. You can try that. Oh, things are dropping to pieces here. Um, Yep, sorry about that. All right, I like to tidy up as I go on. Anyway, we've got the bar here. And we want to mount it vertically. So I've moved it forward before we position this vice to get the right position of it. So if you then look at it from this position, you will see that I bring the I bring the camera around. So that this is now clearing. It's making a clearance from the bench from there. See? So it's just not touching. You might think you don't use a vice like this, but I'm telling you, when you do some maintenance work with components and parts, you very often need to move the uh, part that you're working on down past the usual working position of the jaws. So that's the re reason why we should look carefully at mounting the vice in that position. Okay, so I've got that established. Now let's have a look why, should, why we should take this out now that you've got that idea. That we're going to remove this bar. Put it over here. What you need to do then is to mark out these three positions, these three, three holes mounting parts on this vise. And not point them out. One is here. There's one at the, at the other side. Hmm. can't really see it. It's very difficult to sort of try to do this, but there you are, look. One there, and there's one at the back, underneath the vice uh, body. Um, <clears throat> so, first of all, mark it out with a pencil. I'm not going to do it on this one because I've already got another vice mounted on. But you would mark it, mark it out with the, the pencil there through one of the holes. Right, you could do the, the other one as well. And by moving the vice or opening the vice, you will see the other hole. Okay, but then. We have to drill the hole. So, it's best the best the best way to do this is to drill one first, drill one hole first, and then put a bolt in. Okay, but 
that might not be the best position to put a device anyway. So why? What else can we do? Well, we've already looked at the fact that it would impede the access to the drawers. So, but even if you've not got a drawer there, it will still not be good because the preferred position for one of these vices is at the end, like this other vice, what we've seen here. So I'm going to move this vice out of the way. Uh, whoops, oh, ouch. <laughs> Shot my finger on the, on the moment. I'll just move that there. I put it. I put it on uh, some uh, s protective surface to protect the uh, edge of the bench. So now I'm going to look at this this other vice here. I'll show you that this device I use. It's a bit bigger than the other one. And let me see. Well, you can see the difference there in the sizes. Okay. So, it's obviously more versatile. And with this particular vice here, um, if you can afford to get one like this, and you can, very expensive new, but with this particular vice, it's, it's a quick release vice. So if you want to put a larger component between the jaws, you don't have to turn it too much. Because if you want to come out like that, just press this lever here, and you've got a quick, quick release mechanism, and you can tighten it up. Same way. Uh, <coughs> then it closes out of the way. And same thing. They're really good vices, and these particular vices, they're both record vices, and with the record vice. Uh, they're really good, they're made out of steel, forged, forged, drop forged steel. Now, with, with drop forged, drop forgings, um, they ulti <laughs> ultimately much more stronger, more strength than a cast iron vice. You'll see cast iron vice is very cheap, but a cast iron has got, while it's got a high compressive stress, uh, ratio, the <clears throat> tensile strength of cast iron is not too good. So it's okay on compression, but it could easily break. And sometimes, when you're using this type of vice in engineering, you might have to hit that vice with a hammer on a certain application, which we're not going to go into now. But I wouldn't like to hit cast iron vices; it would probably break. So there we are now. <coughs> And the other thing is, with the mounting of, that's how I mounted this vice on here, but, let's have a look, yeah, I want you to look at the nuts, the bolts, now, you need high tensile, you need to clamp it with high tensile, bolts like that one. That was a high tensile bolt. I had to wash it on and I've seen so many people mount these vices and they put the, the nuts on at the top. Well that's no good. Now I'll show you why. Um, If you put the, the note at the top, so you've got that sort of effect, it can collect debris in between the threads. So I know it is a bit more awkward to mount the notes on the underside of the bench. Um, it's better because, because well, there's no thread to, to clog up, and you're not going to damage the thread. And if you ever want to move the bend, move the vice to another time, you can do. Okay, um, I'm just looking if I can show you on this one the uh, 
whoops, actually on the side of it. Don't worry, can it's a bit too dark. Yeah, you can see the nut there. There we are. So, and then there's, there's the thread there. So you're not going to get debris in the threads. So all together, it's a lot better job. Wow, instead of work moving vices and stuff up and down, now I've got oil all over. So anyway, if you can afford to get one of these vices, uh, look around at the second, look around at the second hand market. They're much better proposition to buy these cheapy ones, and you can and look. They, they last for years. These. <laughs> Get you. These these prices last for years. That quick release price must be oh it could be best part of a hundred years old. <laughs> and um, still working well. But it is drop forged and uh, there you are. Right, I wanted to uh, get that dealt with because it, it's an, a device is an important part of the machine shop. We're going to be looking at other t turning ap applications um, later on in this series which will include how to uh, cut a thread without using a thread dial on the lathe <laughs> and uh, you, you might not find that in textbooks either but there is a way of doing it. Uh, a lot of lathes now they, uh, they've got dials and they tell you what to do but if you've got an older lathe and it's not got a dial a, 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 a thread dial uh, cutting threads then I'm going to show you how to you can cut it without one it's not essential to have all these things to aid the process but definitely not essential so you how to do that I'll show you how to do that and um, in a later uh, project we're going to uh, machining practice I'm going to show you how to generate a taper and um, using the compound slide which is on the way there uh, that's the compound slide there so that's it we set it at an angle I'm sure to generate uh, uh, an angle of um, 30 degrees inclusive angle and show you how to set it and we'll do it by hand so there's no traverse um, I've said before for a lot of operations you don't need auto traverse and auto feeds you can get much better finish without them in some cases uh, and, and, and in other cases you can't even use the auto traverse when you've got a setup and using a compound slide You'll need to know that the finish depends on how smooth action uh, you've got. And that depends on the sense of touch and the method and the technique of turning the hand wheels. I'll show you all that in a later video. Anyway, at the moment, uh, that's all it is for today. Thanks for looking. If you like the video, give us a like. Um, hit the subscribe button. You don't want to miss anything. And thanks very much for watching. See you next time.